Hello there, so today what we're going to be doing is doing an ASP.NET Core REST web server. So as you know, ASP.NET Core is a new open source uh, rewrite of ASP.NET uh, with Web API and uh, MVC. We've been focusing on Web API, we'll continue to do that, but I thought that you should see uh, the differences. It's actually pretty similar to what we've been doing, but I thought I'd provide this for you anyway uh, to take a look. And we're also going to do a more complicated example of REST. Um, and that will start with us having a database. So up in Azure, um, we're just going to do everything in Azure on this, so uh, with maybe a little bit of a little bit of running locally. And so um, up here in Azure we already have a database created and I'm going to show you how I created that real quick just so you can get a feel for how you could do this yourself. I'm using the AdventureWorks database to um, because it, it it's pre-populated with a lot of data and when you create a database in Azure you have an option of creating a blank database. So let me just do this real quick if I do new and I select a uh, SQL database. You'll notice that right here, your source, I can either pick a sample or a blank database or I can restore from a backup. So I'm going to be using the sample AdventureWorks LT, um, which will give us a little company database with a lot of good data in it for us to use. It'll also allow us to look at um, doing more complicated queries against the database and having the resulting data that comes back from REST as well. So I've already got the database created out here. So that database is right here. And it's called AdventureWorks LT. That was the name that I gave it. So that's out there running already for us. And I can connect to that from SQL Server Management Studio I have a copy of that installed locally and that allows me to reach out and actually access this database. So um, I can expand, here's, here's some different tables that are in the database and what we're going to be doing is a really simple little REST service that will give us back address labels. So if you can imagine a business case where you needed to write an application that would actually generate business labels, or, or I'm sorry, address labels to send out to a business. So we have a database of customers. We find that in this table here. I can go ahead and just run that real quick and you'll get a feel for what the data looks like. So you can see there's many different customers in here, which is great. We've got a lot of data to work with. There's 847 rows in that table. And then there is an address table. In true relational manner, the um, database is, is uh, contains multiple tables that are joined together and this is a whole bunch of different addresses that are out there. Okay. Now the reason for that is you could have customers, you could have multiple customers at one address location. You'll notice that we don't have as many addresses as we have uh, as we have customers. Okay, we only have 450 addresses out here. All right, and then finally the table that, that links these two together is called customer address. And this won't mean a whole lot, but basically it's a customer ID mapped to an address ID. And you'll see that that has 417 rows in it. Okay. All right, so we can just look at a database diagram that just shows you how these tables are linked together. So the idea here is we're going to make this REST service very small and very efficient. We don't want to, um, usually when you're designing a, a, a REST resource, you want it to be specific to a specific task. So one approach to this is to try to build out a bunch of resources that represent the whole database. And if you looked at the first video series that we did on REST, that's what we did. We took one table and just used the REST verbs, get, post, put, and delete against that table. 
you really don't do that most of the time in a production environment. You usually have a database that looks more like this, where you're joining multiple tables together. So we don't want to send back three different resources, customer, customer, address, and address, and then have the client have to knit all that together and turn it into something. So we're going to make the resource be very specific to the task at hand, which is returning back address labels. Okay, so that's what we're going to build. We're going to build an address label resource. Okay. Okay, so... Here's our three tables that we're going to be dealing with. We're going to generate this very specific resource. And one thing that you should do before you get started is install um, ASP.NET Core 2.0 or better. Uh, by the version of Visual Studio 2017 that I'm using today, which is on in September of 2017, by default only has Core 1.1 installed. It has a little prompt there that tells you to install 2.0. Go ahead and just install 2.0 just so that you're running on the most current thing. Okay. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and create uh, our REST service. So under File, we select New and then Project. And let's look at the different options that are there. Under Visual C Sharp, which is the language we're going to use, we, we have now this .NET Core option. And under that is something called ASP.NET Core Application. And I am going to set this to be over here. And I'm going to call this, um, let's see, we're going to use that folder. And I'm going to call this Core REST Server. And it'll be created in this folder. Hit OK on that. It comes back and asks me what I want. I'm not doing model view controller. I don't want empty. I want web API. You'll notice this is a little bit different than what we were doing before. And I'm also going to select ASP.NET Core 2.0. And you'll notice there's some other options in here, but we're still sticking with just the, uh, the web API option. So hit OK on that. It's going to go out and create that web service for us. And it creates a values controller to start with. If we double click on that, we'll see it's a really simplistic little controller. And it's got some dummied up code in it. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this right out of the gate to make sure that everything's working the way it's supposed to. So we'll go ahead and compile this. It'll run locally. We're not deploying anything to Azure yet. We're going to do that in just a few minutes. Alright, so here we go. So we'll have conveyor running in here to help with Android. We certainly don't need that for what we're doing. So it's just coming up. It's always a little slow the first time when you run an ASP.NET application that's got to get everything compiled. All right, so by default, it goes off and just hits this local host 3211 slash API slash values. I am going to go ahead and run in Postman. Postman is a REST client application that lets us test out REST calls. So we'll launch that real quick. And we're going to go basically go against the web service that's now running out there. So you want to leave this window. You want to leave this window up, right here. If you close that, it stops the web service. So now we have Postman, and we'll add a new window here, and we will send that through. And it's coming back okay. 
And the other thing that we'll do with get is if we do slash one, it'll go back and get us a particular ID and that, that all works the way we expect. So how did that work? Um, we go through this in a lot more detail in the other video series. I'd recommend that you go through and watch those if you're interested in the details. I'm going to go pretty fast through this, assuming that you've looked at those already. But essentially, the first get call uh, with no parameter on it, no slash one, is going to bring back all the values. So if we had an address labels resource, and I just said address labels, it would bring back all the address labels. Uh, as opposed to getting a specific address label by, in our case, we'll do it by customer ID. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this now. And we are going to build very quickly a, con a new controller. So under controllers over here, we will right click and select add controller. Now you're going to get this prompt here initially when you're using uh, ASP.NET Core. And I'm just going to set minimal dependencies for now. Um, this is going to put some scaffolding code in here that you re it really won't be in your way at all. It's just as a step that we have to go through to configure the tool. You won't have to do this again once you've done it once. So when that's done, it gives you this little readme text file. You can read through that. We're not using MVC, which is what a lot of this applies to. So I'm just going to close that and move on. So again, we'll do add controller. Wow. Let's try this again. There we go. So uh, API controller with read write actions is what we want. And we're going to call this address labels. Um, in the previous videos, I had a person resource, and that really should have been persons. Uh, standard naming convention is you give it a, its plural, basically. So uh, we'll call this one address labels. You'll note, though, this is going to be very, very specific. We're not going to make this generic thing that we can do all kinds of different things with. This is this this resource is specifically designed to handle the problem of getting address labels out of the database. Okay. Okay. The first thing we need to do here is on the what you'll notice down here in the get when we're getting by a specific ID. There's a name associated with this, and um, we we don't want there to be any conflict in the name, so um, we want to say what this is. Now you're not going to actually use the name here. You're going to be using the URI, so this isn't really necessary. In fact, you could probably just delete this name altogether and be fine. But um, if you add multiple controllers, you're going to want to make sure that the names are unique between the controllers. So this is how I'm handling that. You'll notice that that attribute isn't on this other um, this other get. It's just on the one where we're doing by a specific ID. We're not going to be messing around with post, put, and delete initially. We're just going to start into just using get. So we want to we want to go ahead and implement code around these two. To do that we need a model created. So the first thing we're going to do is come over here and create a folder. So I'm going to right click on core rest server project and I'm going to select add new folder and I'm going to call this folder models and in the models folder I'm going to, I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to select add new item and we're going to do a class here and this class is going to be called address label singular okay and then in this we have a bunch of attributes that we need so going back over and looking at our database we're going to be picking out some fields from different tables we're really not going to mess around with the customer address table but we are going to pull data from the customer table 
and from the address table. So think about the attributes that you would need to put a mailing label together or an address label together. And that's what we'll, that's what we'll be doing here. And so things that we're going to pull off is going to be title, first name, last name, middle name, suffix, company name. Um, we're not going to mess with anything else in there. And then address line one, two, city, state, province, county, region, postal code, um, or country and region. So, um, so we'll pull that together real quick. So the way we'll do this is we are going to start out by just declaring some private variables. So first customer ID, which is going to be a long, and and then we're going to do a bunch of strings. So here we go. So the little M naming convention is probably left over from my C++ experience. Um, you can use whatever convention you'd like. These are these are internal private member variables or member attributes. So uh, you'll see how I'm going to expose these publicly in just a minute. You don't want to really use the name because of how I'm going to expose these publicly. So the middle name. This one is going to be suffix. Now all these values won't be set every time you get an address label, so there would need to be some logic on the on the client side to make sure, for example, if suffix wasn't there that it wasn't reserving space for it. But we're not really going to worry about the display part of this so much. We're interested in being able to use this restful service to, to get back a specific resource. So address line one, and I'm going to copy and paste that real quick. Oops. Try that again. Boy, it would have been quicker to type it. Line two. And city. There's a state. Now, <coughs> I'm using similar fields to what's in the database. You certainly don't need to do that. This is handling international addresses, which is what makes it a little bit more difficult. If this was all within a particular country, then you would be able to do this a little bit easier. But All right, so there's our private data. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to do a couple of things real quick. I'm going to highlight all this. And using Visual Studio 2017, I'm going, to, I'm going to right click on the highlight, let me do that again, I'm going to right click on the highlighted selection, let's highlight all of this, I'm going to right click and select quick actions and refactorings and hit the left mouse button, and I'm going to generate a constructor first, so there's a constructor for us, the other thing I'm going to do is encapsulate the field. So this is going to expose all of these publicly for us. And I don't want the M on these. So I'm going to go through and take all these out. And I'll do one other thing real quick. So that's a really nice little code generation trick that you can use that's built into Visual Studio to help you so you don't have to sit here and write all the, write all the getters and setters. 
can be tedious and prone to error. And I'm going to put lowercase on these because these are not classes. So, kind of the general rule of thumb is class names get uppercase and object names get lowercase. And so this is not definitely not a class. The class itself is uppercase, address, label, with a capital A. And with th so these are now publicly exposed. And we may or may not use those. Uh, we're going to definitely use the constructor. And that's it for our model. So just looking at this again real quick, we've got private data members. We had it auto-generate a constructor for us, which basically takes in all of those items as a um, all of those all those items as parameters to the constructor, and then it populates those, and we'll use that to our advantage here in just one minute. And then here we have our customer ID, our title, all of the public versions of those. So going back over to our controller now, let's save this. And if we go back to our controller, what we want to include up here at the top now is using core rest server dot models, because we're going to bring in this model. And here we are going to create a couple of address labels. Now I am just writing a little bit of test code here. This is not production yet. We're not pulling anything from the database yet. We'll do that in the next video. So I'm just going to create a couple of objects. One called address label 1 and that is going to be a new address label and this is where I'm going to use that constructor that I just built. And I'm going to fill that in with a whole bunch of things. I'm not going to have I'm going to have an ID of 1. I'm going to call this Tom, no middle name. You'll notice the parameters that I'm working on there in the little highlight. And this is going to be Tom Jones. And no suffix. And company name. How about Acme Computer Company. And address line one, how about one, two, three, Sycamore Lane. And nothing on address line two. So city. Let's see, I want to make sure I didn't get off here. That's supposed to be, I think I'm off by one somewhere. Oh, I didn't have title in here, so there we go. Because these are all strings, you can make that mistake pretty easily. But if you'll look at the little code tips as I'm editing, it helps you out quite a bit. So let's put this one in Chicago. And let's have the state be ILF is the abbreviation for Illinois. And then postal code, uh, a string again, one, two, three, four, five. And country and region, I'm going to leave that blank. If it were a US address, that we'd probably leave that blank. And then I'm going to make a copy of this. So let's make a copy. Oops. Sorry, let me grab this. Let me try to, I'm trying to make this clear for you in the video is what I'm doing. So I'm just going to copy and paste. We'll call this one address label 2. I need another object. And this one is going to be, uh, this will be ID 2. Again, these coming from the database, these IDs and everything will be set. We're just writing a little test code here. So let's make this one Sally Smith. And instead of Acme Computer Company, let's make it manufacturing company and let's have it be 321 Oak Street and these addresses obviously are totally fake I don't even know the zip code from New York or Chicago so I'm just making things up so 
Uh, we're just getting some data in here so that when we run this, we can say, oh, yep, yeah, that it got that other one. Okay, and then I'm going to take this, and then what we're going to do is we're going to return the new instead of a new. So this thing returns an I enumerable string. We need to change that to an I enumerable address label. And then when we return down here, we'll do a new address label array. And we will put in our two objects that we've already created here. So address label one and address label two. And we're just going to grab this one right here and copy it down to our other get right here. And we want it to return an address label, not a string. This is the nice thing about uh, ASP.NET Web API is it does all the marshalling for you so you don't have to sit there and worry about uh, you just say it's an address label. It knows how to turn the, the class, the object, um, back into something that makes sense in JSON. It's very, very convenient compared to other languages that you might work with where that's a lot more challenging. All right, so we have all of our code in here. Let's go ahead and run this locally. Make sure it works, and then we'll deploy it up to Azure. And then we'll test it there. And then we'll be done for this video. So we'll go ahead and run this real quick. So you'll notice the annotations that are in here now that are different than they are with the uh, standard web API work that we were doing before. So this by default will still jump over to the values controller and that's fine. We just want the web service up and running. So it's still coming up. You can see the little spinner right there. Again, compiling for the first time doesn't do this every time you hit it, but the first time that you hit it, somebody has to compile it, and so it compiles. All right, so let's jump over to Postman and make sure that our values controller is still working. Let's send that get. You'll notice here I have get for the verb, and then I have the URI, and I'm going to put, instead of values, I'm going to put address labels and there we get our data back so it worked and then if we just ask for any ID it's always just going to give us back the one and when we have the database wired up it'll obviously give us back the correct one but you can see that that works so now we're ready to deploy to Azure we have everything working here locally and so we will stop this and deploying to Azure is very easy. All we do is under build, we select publish. We're going to Azure. Uh, we'll go ahead and create a new thing up there. So we'll hit publish. Um, you'll have to authenticate if you haven't set that up in the particular session that you're in. It will keep track of, of your ID for some period of time. So I'm just logging in here to my Azure portal. Microsoft makes this really seamless, so it works great. So just let it go ahead and uh, do the authentication it needs to do here. Okay, so we're authenticated now, and it's going and pulling the information, and we don't want the app name to be this. I'm going to call it, now I've already deployed one out there. Um, you'll see Core REST Server 1 is out there, so I'm going to call this one Core REST Server 2. Um, I could go over the top of this Core REST Server 1, but I want to really show you that it's, that it's brand new. So I'm going to select Core, Core REST Server 2, and... I'm going to use the core REST server resource group that I already created. You could set select new here and create a new resource group. You could select a new app service plan. 
but I'm just gonna use the existing ones that are up there and I'm gonna hit create and then I'm gonna pause the video because this takes a minute or so to go ahead and deploy. So you'll notice down here at the bottom we're deploying step zero of one and it now has deployed everything up there and it gives me a site URL here. So I'm gonna copy that. Now it's doing a build. Let's go over to our portal and see if it's there yet. It's still, it's still actually deploying, if you'll notice down here at the bottom. Still working on it. There we go, it's pushing the files up now. Okay, it's deployed and now it's going to kick off this. And I've noticed that for one reason or another, it can't, it tries to launch this page here and it's not showing it. But if I do a refresh up here, I see Core REST Server 2, and if I click into it, you notice down here it says build one succeeded, publish one succeeded, so it all looks good. And it is up and running. Okay. All right, and here is the URL. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to jump over to Postman. Open a new window. Drop that in. Slash API at the end. Slash address labels. So now we're coming off of Azure. Go ahead and send that and we get our data back. And if I test it with a parameter that works and if I jump back over to Azure and do a refresh I don't know what the resolution is here on the there's there's our uh, the data coming back out so here's our requests I'm just showing a little bit of the monitoring that goes on out there, okay? This resource group, this app. Okay, so data out. So we'll look a little bit more at the monitoring, but this is where you would see what was going on with your service, okay? All right, well, that's everything I wanted to show you in this first video. The next thing we'll do is actually hook up, hook up the database. And I want to talk about that just a little bit. You may wonder why I don't use things like Entity Framework. I'm really trying to um, m keep this as simple as possible. And when we start introducing a lot of code that... Um, uh, like Entity Framework, it can get pretty complicated pretty quickly. So we may look in some subsequent videos of trying some of this out with Entity Framework, but for right now, I'll probably just be using more of the just the standard ADO.NET access to the database. We are going to, however, not do inline queries uh, as we were doing before. We're going to actually use either stored procedures or views or some combination of both in the database. All right, so I hope this was useful for you. Again, what we did was we built a ASP.NET Core 2.0 REST web service, and we have created our controller and our model, and now we're ready to wire up the database, which we'll be doing in the next video. Thanks for watching. Please make sure that you subscribe. That helps support us, and also like if you found this useful. If you could like the video, that would help. Thanks.